Hey everybody, it's a beautiful day on the Oregon coast today and we got a nice low tide. So we're gonna go out and dig us a few limits of gaper clams. There's some nice big clams, good for making chowder or frying the necks. Got a couple of, I got a crack staff, a crack staff of clam diggers out here with me today. And we're gonna try to have the time of our lives. But first things first, and we gotta switch the crocs from casual mode to action mode. <laughs> So this is the kind of hole I'm looking for. And I'm actually gonna put my finger in there and feel if I can feel a clam. Ah, he's in there. I just felt his neck for a minute and then it pulled back. So I know there's a clam in there. And you can also tell because the walls of the hole are really clean and defined. So what I'm gonna do, what I like to do, is keep track of that hole. I'm gonna dig my hole kind of a few inches off to the side of there. I'm always keeping track of that clam hole. I get about a foot and a half down there, and then I can just start breaking away the dirt from the side of that hole. I want to do this pretty carefully so I don't bust that clam. And then I can break away some more, and then I'll feel it. Once I get down to it, I can feel the neck with my finger. So I got a good idea where that clam is. And now I can either dig some more with the shovel but I like to do this part by hand to try to avoid breaking that thing it's kind of tricky because they're in there tight and you got to kind of work your fingers around them to get them loosened up from the surrounding sand there he is but I can feel them in there and so I just I'm gonna work around both sides of the shell and then give them a little wiggle try to break it loose. All right, here it comes. There it comes. Just a small one. I get four times that size, but it's a start. digging clams is with very little training once you know where to go and when to go you're gonna get your clams every time take your time here this they got real soft shells and if they break they can cut you pretty badly Oh boy, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, doesn't look like much, does it? It's in there, I promise you. <laughs> Another great clam. There we go, here we go, here we go. Ah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we got our foot and our neck. Big old clam, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That'll do. Everybody got limits clams? Yeah. Ready to go clean these things up. So now we're back and I got a full load of these gonzo jumbo clams right here. Look at these. These are some monsters. But now the work begins because I got three limits of these that I got to clean off. And luckily the weather is real nice and it's going to be a real nice afternoon for 
zenning out and cleaning some clams in the backyard. Now the first thing I want to do is rinse as much of the mud and the dirt out of this guy as I can with just some good cold water. I'll just, you can see it. it just comes pouring out of there. I want to get inside of there. I'm not purging these clams. You can purge these clams if you have seawater. I mean the best way to do it is if you're actually at the coast overnight or for several hours put them in a mesh bag or a wire basket and just hang them off a dock and they'll purge but if you try to do these at home in just fresh tap water they'll die and go bad and there's a lot of talk about putting them in cornmeal and stuff it really doesn't do a thing so the best way to purge these is in actual seawater but I don't have any on me so I'm just gonna wash them as best I can and get as much of the sand off as I can with the hose. So I'm gonna go right into this opening, run along the top of the shell with my knife. Again, down along the bottom. You can see it's already starting to pop open. And then you can look in there and you can find that little muscle cut along the shell. everything away from the shell and then pop. There we go. Put that away. that little scallop right there. That is incredibly good to eat. Yum. <clears throat> okay, so now cut the neck off right below the nasty skin. Set that aside. Come down here. There's another scallop that off take off the foot that little shark fin guy you can see the goo just pops right out that disgusting little noodle and then slice open the gut and just squeeze out the black goo I guess I can use this spoon into the knife that's pretty handy oh yeah that worked real good said so this part is ugly it's gross looking but it has tons of clam flavor and it just kind of dissolves into the chowder or the fritters whatever we're gonna make and just adds flavor there are a couple of little crabs in each one of these clams a couple of little crab live in there it's unfortunate for them but very fortunate for these chickens oh they love them so here's my gut bit, uh, the foot and the neck are gone, you can see that nice delicious scallop right there. And I'm going to peel any of this black skin right off of there that I can. There we go, that's no good, no more. I've got most of the black stuff cleaned out of the inside and now you can see the gills are here and the gut is here. I'm gonna cut the gills away. Salvage that little scallop. Give those gills to the chickens. And this gut piece is now pretty much ready to be used. There's a little more gill right there. This is ready to be used in my chowder and my fritters. So I've got my clams partially cleaned. All the parts are separated out. But I've gotta get this real thick skin off of these necks. And that's kind of difficult to do. Uh, you can just blanch them in some real hot water, then throw them in an ice bath, and that helps to peel them off. But what I'm going to do is leave these on ice for several hours to overnight, and that's going to let these muscles relax. They're real contracted right now. You can see how these all wrinkled up, and it's very tight. But as that relaxes, this will stretch out, and it'll be smoother, and then I'll do the blanching and the ice bath and get that skin off of there left my necks in the refrigerator overnight 
and they're a lot softer now. The muscles have relaxed and they're kind of limp. So I'm going to blanch these in some very hot boiling water. Just throw them in there and give them 30 seconds to a minute and then we'll shock them in some ice water and start to peel them. There we go, we'll just get those ice cold and then get to peel them. And each one of these, they've got a couple siphons. One's an Innie, one's an Audi. And I'm just gonna take a knife or scissors, run it down, slice it open on one side. And then you can either go all the way through right here or push it in siphon. Now we're going to cutting to the inside on that one so it becomes one nice sheet of meat. I'll give that a quick rinse. Now this is by far the most difficult part about doing these big gaper clams or soft shell clams is getting this skin off so usually the blanching helps but it's still kind of tough and you gotta you just gotta work at it every now and then you get one that comes off real easy and you get all all stoked and then the next one is a pain in the butt this one's going very well so far mm -hmm, not too bad See that nice sort of magenta colored tip there? There's nothing wrong with that. It just it looks cool and it tastes good too. That's it. That's needs a little rinse still, but that's a beautiful piece of clam meat there that you can make just excellent cut it and make really good clam strips because it's nice and meaty and chowder and shoot, I just like to eat them. You know, dipped in a little lemon and butter just like this too. But there we go. There you have it. I'm gonna whip through about 35 more of these, and then we'll get to making some chowder later.